All right, guys, here's the deal. We're going to go on a little scuba diving adventure today. And um, if I actually make a video, if we find anything, I'll just narrate it. Pretty muddy right here. As I was paddling um, across the river, I noticed that uh, there is better, some good bed of rock out there. So hopefully we'll be able to find a few things. Now, this particular river is actually pretty big. It's wide, not too terribly deep, but it's too deep to wade around for sure. I'm going to get in the water, get my tanks on, we'll get in, hopefully we'll find, if not Civil War stuff, at least something, <laughs> something interesting. Well, there's always interesting stuff out there. All right, what do you say? All right, so we're underwater, I'm going to set up the metal detector. I want to be able to hear some of the iron and, of course, everything else. And always remember to ground balance, even when you're underwater like that. Now, it'll still work if you don't do that, but the metal detector may be really super sensitive and noisy, or the opposite, it'd be really quiet and you won't hear things as well. It may not pick up items very deep. It's a trade off, but uh, ground balance is usually the way to go. All right, our first target, non ferrous, meaning non iron, is a fishing weight. It's about, uh, about an ounce, so they sound just like bullets. At least the old sinkers do, that are made out of mostly pure lead. The newer ones aren't even made out of lead. They do that for the uh, environment and so that geese and things that might accidentally swallow those sinkers when they're rooting around on the bottom don't get lead poisoning. Geese and ducks and other waterfowl. Obviously you have something down in that crack and it can be uh, kind of hard to get those things out right in the corner there. Uh, another fishing weight, slightly smaller. And they'll read a little bit lower on the meter on the metal detector. This is a little bit less uh, lead there. More targets. Looks like a bunch of fishing weights from here, maybe some split shot down in there. And another one over there. So my guess is I'm going to leave this spot here in a second because I'm just finding fishing weights. And there we go. Uh, what is that? I thought it looked like a steering wheel, but I think it's, it's brassy. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, I almost recognize that. It looked like it's off a Mercedes or something, but it's probably not what it is really grassy in this part of the river. I have to kind of scoot and hunt in the little patches in between where I can see the rocks. Not too deep, maybe five or six feet right in this area. A little turtle. <laughs> there he goes. I don't like the chig. I'd rather they swim away than swim toward me. All right, we got our first Civil War bullet. Obviously, I had already dug it up. That is a fired one. I can tell by the tip of it is deformed. And if you look real close, you can see the rifling marks on it. So at least we're not skunk for the day. A little coppery, brassy thing, probably part of a boat. But it could have washed in on a flood too, from a from a house or mobile home. Some type of irony pole. Looks almost like a fence post, but not so sure. Another piece of copper brass. Doesn't look very old to me though. Not Civil War era. But it's really hard to say with just little fragments like that. More iron. I thought it might be a gun barrel. I think it is a gun. It looks like a gun barrel, doesn't it? Not a Civil War era. I'm not sure that's what that actually was, but it kind of looked like a, uh, a shotgun barrel. Another Civil War bullet. That one was fired as well. There was a little battle in the area. So that's a solid base. Probably a Sharps, but I'm not 100% just looking at it here. That was a crawdad claw. Strange flat rock. It looks almost like it's been worked, like an Indian um, Indian artifact. Might be a big shard of one. I'm not 100% on it. I just left it there. I'll signal over there. Now you notice I do cuts in between here. Where I'll actually cut out a lot of the search because something like this could take me, you know, five minutes, five ten minutes to to find, and you don't want to watch all that. I'm sure. Something small, very light. That's going to be a little piece of aluminum foil, I do believe. I already dug that up. You can see the fishing line as I was pulling on it. 
and I always save all those and always keep my fishing line or any fishing line you find out there. I always try to keep that because it gets tangled around duck uh, legs and everything else. It's a death trap. Now the bullet, you can see already uh, already dug it up. I think that one is probably fired, but not 100%. Check my air. Okay, my air is getting pretty low, kind of down toward the red zone, so I'm actually going to scoot back to the boat and get a new tank in just a few minutes. More iron. Nice spike in that deep sand. That takes a long time to dig when it's in that sand like that. Now the little trail going across the sand. I don't know, maybe clams do that. I'm not really sure. Or those mussels that you see in my videos. I'm not sure what makes that. Another, that's another bullet. That's a round ball or a musket ball and it's dropped. I think I actually changed locations at this point slightly. Uh, when I switch the tank out. Another bullet in this drop, that is a pistol bullet. I believe that's a Confederate pistol bullet, but look, it's been made into a fishing weight. That could have been lost well after the war. Someone could have found that up on the streets of the local town or in the farm fields and just made a sinker out of it. A piece of aluminum, that's a lid to something. That's where I dug it. I think that's like a well, don't want to call it a clevis, but something you might join a chain together with. You slide the chain in there and you hammer it shut. Looks like a horseshoe from here. I think I just left it. I'm not sure what that, not sure what that thing is. <laughs> Oh, this is an interesting story. That piece of wood I actually set up there as a marker because I have another camera that's running right now making a, a video of one of the mussels that's out there. And I had to use that board as a marker so I could find my camera. And it actually took me like a half an hour to find it again. And there it is right there. It's a GoPro just getting a close-up of uh, the mussel do, doing its thing. And what it's trying to do there is attract a fish uh, that will come and nibble on those little appendages and uh, the mussel will inject I want to say like babies into the fish's mouth and they will attach the gills of the fish and after a while they fall out and they become little mussels or little clams they look like clams but they're they're actually mussels some more iron I always want to dig the iron because it could be bayonets gun tools muskets anything so I like to dig a lot of the iron if there's not too much junk in the area. That is a spinner blade. That's a fishing lure part of it. I'm, you can see my second tank is already getting low. So at this point, I probably spent five hours underwater for what I have now, which isn't a lot. Little brass screw. Uh, looks very familiar. And I think it might have come out of a musket. They have brass screws like that. Oh, this is my pride and joy of the hunt. It's a coin. And I got some pictures coming up on the end for you to show you exactly what that is. I didn't know it was a coin that for sure when I found it. It kind of felt like it, but I just couldn't I can't make I couldn't make it out underwater what exactly what it was. I'm still trying though. <laughs> Feels like silver, it kinda of looks like silver would look, but it's a weird shape and size. And I do search this area pretty good afterwards. I'm testing it to see how high it reads. 83, that's good. That's kind of a silvery reading for something that's not real big. And if it was like a silver dollar, it might be up to 93. So I'm pretty happy at this point. But also running out of air. Another musket ball. Oh, that's a, uh, looks like a, a die, like a dice almost. Like someone carved it into something that you could throw. I guess I should say die, but I just say dice because most people understand that. Another signal there, mostly dug. I've already fanned a lot of the dirt away. And uh, if it's light, like a uh, pull tab or something like that, when you fan like that, it'll it'll go away, it'll move. So when I first start cleaning the area, I don't know what that is. Heavy, brassy thing. Not sure what it is.
But when you're feeling like that, if it's aluminum, whoop, almost in the red. <laughs> Hunt's almost over. <laughs> There we go. What do we have there? We have another piece of coppery brass. It's like a little tube. I'm not sure what it is. Somebody, oh, those are like uh, waders, fishing waders. I'm just glad there's no bones sticking out of it. Um, yeah, so, but I'll always need to check those things. You can see it's starting to get dark too. It's getting a little bit, the water's getting darker. Good signal there. It is a drop gardener bullet. Now that's an awesome sweet confederate bullet uh kind of valuable actually you find uh yeah, getting closer <laughs> i'm actually getting pretty close to the bank right now anyway so and of course my boat's right over my head so I, I can run the tank dry here it's not that deep probably no more than 10 feet I'm trying to get you so you can hear the signal there it's a nice, i think it's a nice big signal oh no actually that's not what i was doing what i was doing is checking to see if there were more bullets and there weren't any right there she's pretty hard packed oh yeah see some lead it's another round musket ball that one's dropped for sure and the round balls could have been confederate or union but mostly confederate especially later in the war well, I shouldn't even say mostly. It could be either. There's no way to tell. Unless you're in a camp that only had certain soldiers in it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Another Confederate gardener. And that's a nice one. You can see Whoops. Looks like the tank's dry. <laughs> that was a heck of a way to gotta end go. the day. Um, the last sip of air, and I got into a little bullet patch. Those were drop Confederate bullets. Um... Boy, I tell you, I'm, I'm done for the day. So actually, the sun's going down, so I guess I should be going home anyway. That was awesome, wasn't it? I think that coin we found is a silver coin. I, I can could not see it, uh, make out what it was, but it feels like it's probably going to be like an older uh, silver coin, maybe even a Spanish silver coin, I hope so. All right, we'll get back out here. I promise you, man, we'll get right back to this exact spot right here. That's freaking awesome, wasn't it? <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. You'll shake the coins from your pocket Take your gold chain and your locket Mother Earth has no sympathy She'll take the ring from your hand And bury it in the sand And keep it for eternity Mother Earth, she's got her secrets She's promised to keep Hidden in her dirt or deep in her creek Mother Earth, she ain't saying exactly what she's saving, where it is or what it might be. Mother Earth, you are my lady, my big round baby. I'll rock you until I go to sleep. She don't care if you're dying or if you're living or somewhere in between. Mother Earth, you are my lady, my big round baby, and I'll rock you until I go to sleep. She'll shake the coins from your pocket, take your gold chain and your locket, Mother